Welcome, welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome list of colleges and institutions for you to hear from tonight. But first, I have just a couple of housekeeping items. So number one, we know that you have questions. So don't hesitate to put those questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. You don't have to wait for your college or university um, to, to present before you ask those questions. But do make sure that you put the, the college name in your question so they know who you're asking the question of and they can respond appropriately. Secondly, this is a webinar and your camera and your microphone are off. So our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, thirdly, uh, sign up for more sessions. This is the last session for tonight, but there will be more sessions in April. And so if you've enjoyed this format, which I know that you will, uh, make sure that you sign up for more that are coming in April. This is being recorded this evening or this afternoon. <laughs> so uh, you will have this available for playback along with any of the other sessions that were happening today within a week of, um, of this presentation and they will be on the website where you um, signed up. So without further ado, I'm gonna kick off this panel and I'm gonna turn it over to the University of North Texas. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Peacock. I'm the admissions officer with the University of North Texas, uh, the frozen tundra of North Texas. Uh, actually, it's uh, 70 degrees today, uh, so we have come through the worst of our winter storms and uh, hope for the best. But I've got an opportunity to talk a little bit about my university. Uh, so the University of North Texas, we're located in Denton, Texas, just north of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, Denton has been voted as one of the best small towns in America, uh, as well as one of the best college towns in America. I certainly encourage you to come and visit campus uh, and get a taste of what Denton has to offer as well. We have a smaller campus in Frisco, uh, which my colleague Hanan uh, works at. Uh, which does offer some uh, freshman oriented programs. Uh, and we're located just north of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, um, incredible uh, economic um, powerhouse of, of, uh, of an area uh, for job opportunities following graduation internships while on campus. A little bit of our history and traditions. We were founded in 1890 above a hardware store on the Denton Square. Uh, we've changed our names about seven times, final, uh, finally settling on University of North Texas in uh, 1989. And our official mascot is Scrappy. Uh, we have an unofficial mascot, Lucky the Abano Squirrel, that uh, if you do tour campus, you might get a chance to take a peek at. And our uh, uh, athletics teams are named the Mean Green. Uh, we are a large state institution, uh, almost 41,000 students as of the fall semester, um, 2,600 international students, and we are a minority serving institution and Hispanic serving institution. Um, we have a large honors college on campus and we are classified as a tier one research university uh, by the Carnegie classification system. Uh, academically speaking, uh, we're one university with 12 different colleges with campuses in Denton, Frisco, and courses available online. Uh, 109 different undergraduate degree programs are available. So generally, I tell students, as long as you don't want to be a nurse, uh, an architect, or a farmer, we have something for you at UNT. Uh, 89 of our programs are ranked uh, among the top 100 in their fields. Uh, among a few of these, aviation logistics, uh, consumer experience management, emergency administration and planning, our uh, world-renowned jazz studies program out of our College of Music, uh, and our communications design program. Uh, we have 425 different student organizations on campus, so students can remain active uh, both on campus um, uh, and housing and dining, always an important uh, option. We have 15 different residence halls, including our newest dining hall, Eagles Landing, which has just opened. Um, incredible dining facilities at North Texas, including the first all vegan cafeteria in the nation, uh, the second uh, Big 8 allergen free cafeteria, and now Eagles Landing. Great opportunity to come and uh, grab a bite to eat when you do visit campus. Uh, Athletically speaking, we are a Division I uh, athletic program uh, offering the following sports, uh, 
For the non-scholarship options, we do offer 35 different uh, rec sports programs, uh, including our uh, national championship paintball, paintball team, as well as a university-sponsored esports program. Uh, academically speaking at North Texas, uh, as a state institution in Texas, we do look at rank and class if it's available. Um, but as with the SAT ACT scores, uh, SAT ACT scores are optional for admissions purposes. Uh, so if students do have a high school cumulative GPA of at least 3.0, they would be eligible for admissions. Uh, and of course, the higher the GPA, the more scholarships available, uh, scholarship monies are available. Uh, we accept the Apply Texas application and the Common application. Uh, we are accepting both still for fall of 2021, uh, and we will uh, open, uh, Apply Texas opens July 1 of 2021 for fall of 2022 students. Application deadline, apply early. Uh, our priority dates for financial aid is January 15th annually, so the sooner students are applied and admitted, uh, they're able to be uh, awarded much sooner. And our scholarship applications, uh, while it's not mandatory, there are some scholarship students can receive. March 1st is the deadline. Go to the last page. A uh, few famous alumni from North Texas history, including Dr. Phil Stone Cold, Steve Austin, uh, Mean Joe Green, um, Toby Nwigway, uh, the Eli Young Band, just a few of our uh, famous alumni from North Texas. Uh, and finally, my contact information, peacock at unt.edu. We will be getting information from students, so we'll certainly look forward to affording more information about North Texas. Uh, and if interested, we would love to have you come and visit if you have an opportunity. Let us know if you have any questions. We appreciate your time this afternoon, and go Mean Green. Jason, thank you so much to you, your colleague, and to the University of North Texas. Those of you watching, um, don't forget you can put those questions in the Q&A at any time. Next, I have the pleasure of introducing Butler University. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my screen shared with you. All right, so my name is Ann Denz, as you mentioned. Um, I'm an admission counselor at Butler University, been there about four years now, um, and have really enjoyed kind of helping students within Kansas and um, other areas in the Midwest find their way to Butler. Um, so just to kind of give a little bit of a lowdown of the size of Butler, um, we are located in Indianapolis, just about five, 10 minutes away from the downtown Indy area. Um, so we have really great access to internships, job opportunities, and also just social events if you want to get off campus every now and then. Um, we have a little under 5,000 undergraduate students. We do have about five to 600 graduate students, um, but we are a mostly undergraduate focused institution. So that leaves a lot of opportunities for research, um, jobs on campus, really just focusing on that undergraduate experience. Average class size is about 22. So we like to keep things a little bit smaller, more personalized for that academic setting. Um, and we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So that's gonna give you a really close connection with not only your peers, but as well um, with your professors. So we wanna make sure you're having a really collaborative um, discussion-based environment there. Um, next, whoops, sorry. I will just kind of do a brief breakdown. I know this is kind of a lot of information to take in here, um, but we have six different colleges on campus um, that house about 65 different undergraduate majors and a couple of graduate programs as well. Um, so we have the College of Communication um, that has anywhere from like journalism, sports media, strategic communication, um, and really state-of-the-art equipment to work with to kind of move your way straight into the workforce if that's what you're interested in. We also have the College of Education. Um, we are trying to get in-classroom teaching experience as early and often as we can with those students. And they've actually had about 100% placement rate for the last 15 or 16 years. So they're seeing a lot of success there. College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, that is going to be home to the most majors, natural sciences, social sciences, humanities, really interdisciplinary programs. And as I mentioned, having that undergraduate base is really gonna allow for our students to do some really solid research on their own to really start building their resume and help them whether they're applying to graduate programs or applying to jobs right after college. 
um, College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. So that is really anything related to the healthcare field. That pharmacy program is one of those programs that may lead you into the graduate work. Um, and then we also have a two-year physician's assistant master's program housed under that specific college. Um, Jordan College of the Arts, we have a nationally ranked ballet program, music, theater, dance, art plus design. Um, that requires a supplemental piece to the application, but um, we have some really great performance and ensemble opportunities for non-majors as well. And then Lacey School of Business, that last one, um, we have a new business building. You can kind of see there in that picture that just opened up about two years ago. Um, our business is all, all about, our business school is all about getting you experience. So we require two internships. We have specific business classes where you will create your product and kind of create an entire business plan for a product in order to market that with your peer group. Um, and then we also have professional career mentors just to be a really great resource and guide for you. To kind of dive into just basic um, life on campus, you can see in that top left picture is Butler Blue the fourth. Um, that is our live mascot that we have on campus. So we are the Bulldogs and a strong generation of Bulldogs um, at that. So we also have, you can see in this middle section, um, kind of a BU Be Well model um, where we have eight different dimensions that we really focus on during your time at Butler. Um, so we want to make sure that you are successful in the classroom and growing intellectually and career-based, but we also want to make sure that, that we're taking care of your physical and mental health um, that we are really endorsing and promoting diversity and inclusion on campus um, and really building your opportunities to um, emphasize sustainability, get involved in community service. Um, we have over 130 student organizations on campus, so there's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, and I would say that is our main thing about our student body. Our community wants to get involved both on campus and in the surrounding Indianapolis area. Um, you can also see a, one little version of our on-campus housing um, in the bottom right. That is an example of one of our first year dorms. So you have um, pretty updated facilities there and you have a little bit of privacy with that privacy wall. Um, I would also like to mention we have amazing study abroad opportunities. About 40% of our students will study abroad at some point. Um, we also have tons of job opportunities both on campus and in the surrounding community. Um, and then you can again see that picture of Indianapolis on that left side too. Um, we have great restaurants, a really fun young social life, some sporting events in the area, and Butler will often provide transportation and discounted tickets to some of the events happening in the Indianapolis area in general. Um, so we really just want to emphasize building that community both on and off campus. Um, we are allowing visitors right now. So if you have the chance to come um, and make it to Indianapolis, we would love to have you. And so would Blue. Um, that is kind of all I have to share with you guys today. Um, again, if you are able to make it to campus, we are doing tours. We're doing um, all sorts of kind of different virtual visits as well. So um, we'd be happy to have you. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, to hear from some of you guys soon. Thanks, Anne. Thanks to you and Butler University. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from Midwestern State University. Okay, let's get the slides going here. Um, yeah. And there we go. I am Christy Glazer and I'm with MSU Texas. And I'm glad that you all could join for the virtual session today. As I go through the slides, there's some QR um, codes on the slides, and you can use your QR reader to get some more specific information on our website. Um, and um, Midwestern State University is a four-year public university located in Wichita Falls, Texas, which is um, a little over two hours south of Oklahoma City, and then um, two hours north of the DFW Metroplex. MSU's enrollment size is relatively smaller compared to medium and large size public universities. We have 6,000 students enrolled from 44 states and 54 countries. Our student to faculty ratio is 18 to 1. Our students enjoy being in smaller classes and forming close connections with the faculty and their peers. The university campus is 255 acres surrounded by nice neighborhoods and city amenities such as restaurants, movie theaters, a mall, and other retail stores. 
Outside of class, there's a lot to do on campus. We have 14 different fraternities and sororities, over 100 student clubs and organizations, and Division II athletics. Our sports include football, men's and women's basketball, soccer, tennis, and golf, and women's volleyball, softball, cross country, and track. We have many events that are hosted each year, such as our Carib Fest that celebrates Caribbean culture and diversity at MSU, and our homecoming week with various activities such as our annual cardboard boat race and bonfire. MSU provides a wonderful college living experience on campus. We have several different housing options that include two on-campus apartments, as well as three traditional residence hall and one living learning community and legacy hall. Our living learning programs are highly recommended because of the close interactions and connections you have with your peers inside and outside the classroom. Most freshmen are required to live on campus unless you live within a 60 mile radius of the MSU campus. Students are encouraged to complete their housing applications as soon as possible so that you're more likely to get your preferred option. MSU has over 70 undergraduate and graduate programs of study. Our four largest academic areas are student or health sciences, business, education, and mathematics and science. Some of our most well-known programs in health sciences are nursing, radiology, respiratory care, dental hygiene, athletic training, and exercise physiology. We also have many pre-professional programs that can be combined with our science majors and health science majors. We offer study abroad opportunities in England, Spain, France, and Central America. We also have a Red Vine Honors Program that allows students to interact with other high achieving students in small classes and an honors living learning community. The Honors Program offers $4,000 and $7,000 scholarships depending on academic merit and students have the opportunity to do the study abroad. MSU has a rolling admissions process, which allows us to process and render an admissions decision usually within two to three weeks of completing your application and submitting all documents. Our um, priority deadline is March 1st, and we do have merit-based scholarships, and you must be accepted by April 1st. Uh, MSU is test optional for fall 2021. Um, but students who do test well or have already done the SAT or ACT, um, we do need those scores for consideration for some merit-based scholarships. MSU prides itself on being an affordable option to students. Our estimated cost per semester based on tuition and fees, room and board, and books and supplies is usually around $10,500 a semester, and that's taking at least 15 hours. We do allow you to lock in your tuition rate um, to avoid increasing future um, college tuition rates. And MSU provides a variety of great scholarships opportunity. The merit-based scholarships listed here at the top are automatic scholarships that we offer students as long as you have been accepted with your highest test scores on file before April 1st. We are also a participant with Raise Me, which allows high school students to earn scholarship money with us from freshman to senior year. MSU is offering on-campus tours at Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2. We do have a virtual um, tour as well at msutexas.edu, and we do have pre-registration um, on Saturdays for select Saturdays. We have a Mustang Rally event coming up on March the 6th, and this visit gives students a chance to connect with our academic departments to learn more specific information about majors and programs. So I appreciate that you joined this afternoon to learn more about MSU Texas and thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Christy, to you sure. and Midwestern State University. Um, audience, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A at any time. Um, you've already heard from three great institutions, and we're only halfway through three great ones to go. So next up, I'd like to introduce the new school. Hello. Hi. All right. Let's get our presentation up and go in.
All right, well, welcome. Uh, my name is Parker. Uh, I am one of the admissions counselors at the new school. We're located in New York City. Uh, we're really, really excited to be here today. Um, one, because it's really important for us to kind of introduce what some of the things we have going on in New York City uh, and some of the exciting things that we really do here as a part of an institution that is in such a vibrant place like New York. Um, but to kind of start us off, so our name is The New School, but we actually weren't founded new or recently. Uh, we were founded in 1919 uh, by a collection of faculty who had been studying at other universities uh, in New York City, so like Columbia University, and they had really become a little bit frustrated with the intellectual culture of the time and were looking to formulate quite literally a new place um, to talk about social issues and things that were happening in society at that point. But today, um, we still keep that vibrancy and that method and that mission with us. Um, and we have five renowned schools that we uh, all culminate into one uh, collaborative university, which is called the New School. Um, we'll talk about three of them today that are really primarily for undergraduate students. Um, but those will be Parsons School of Design, uh, the Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts, and the College of Performing Arts. So new school students, no matter if they are studying in design, liberal arts, or performing arts, all benefit from being a part of this larger comprehensive university that really celebrates interdisciplinary study and innovation at all levels. In terms of our community and the population that we have here uh, at the new school, our community consists of about 10,000 students uh, and around 8,000 students are actually our undergraduate student population. And we have representation from all 50 states and about 30% of our population are international students. So we have a really true diverse student population on our campus. And to give some context into some of our programs and some of the things that we do, um, we have, again, like I said, three programs, um, three schools that are really geared towards undergraduate students. Um, so the first is the Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts. And this is basically our traditional undergraduate degree programs, Bachelor of Arts degrees. Uh, and students who are studying with us at Lang are studying humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. Uh, next, we have the College of Performing Arts. And students within the College of Performing Arts are studying things like classical music at Manus School of Music, jazz and contemporary music at the School of Jazz and Contemporary Music, and dramatic arts at the School of Drama uh, in areas such as acting, playwriting, creative technology, and dramaturgy. And next, Parsons School of Design, which is actually the largest school within the new school. Uh, but here within Parsons School of Design, we have students who are studying art, design, and actually business courses as well. And along with uh, our Parsons School of Design, campus in New York City. We also have a campus in Paris. Uh, and we have three majors within Parsons Paris and our curriculum is all taught in English. Students can study all four years at Parsons Paris or can do study abroad terms at this, at this campus. So if you have an academic interest that spans schools and spans academic programs, uh, don't worry. Here at the New School, we have a number of ways in which students are able to explore across disciplines. The first is through our BA BFA Pathway Program. And this is really designed for students who are interested in a comprehensive education in either art and music and liberal arts. So this is a five-year program. What what happens is students will culminate that and get a Bachelor of Arts degree from the Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts, and will then get a BFA from either the Parsons School of Design or the School of Jazz and Contemporary Music within the College of Performing Arts. Additionally, uh, some of our bachelor's degree programs at the new school also have master's degree pairings. So students who are interested in doing a combined bachelor's and master's degree can, can do that program. Ultimately, it saves students time and money as this is a five-year program as compared to a traditional six years to complete both degrees. And on top of that, even if uh, taking on a whole other degree program is too much or is not of a student's interest, students can still study across disciplines by choosing one of our 50 university-wide minors that come from all three of the schools. So popular minors at our university uh, include communication design, which is graphic design, psychology, and creative entrepreneurship. 
So this on your screen is actually a campus map on the left-hand side and the exterior of the university center, which is quite literally the center of our campus. Uh, here at the New School, we have the largest performance venue in Lower Manhattan, which is called the Tishman Auditorium. Uh, we also have performance venues. Um, we have our making center, which spans three stories of our Parsons building, and we have print shops, 3D printing labs, laser labs, uh, 16 camera motion capture studios, with green screen, wood shops, um, all sorts of, of art and design laboratories for students to take part in. And again, being that we're this collaborative university, all students have access to utilize the Making Center. But additionally, uh, we have four campus, campus libraries, we have four residence halls, and 4,000 square feet of street-facing exhibition space. So while right now, unfortunately, um, being that we're in New York City, we are not doing in-person tours at the moment, I definitely, definitely recommend uh, to take our virtual tour. Um, it's really, really great opportunity for students to kind of see what we're all about and to kind of view the area. I know I'm running out of time. So to go quickly over um, some of our application requirements, um, we review holistically uh, each individual applicant in regards to their personal essays, transcripts, recommendation letters, and then in some cases, auditions, creative portfolios or interviews. Um, we are on the Common App. And just a quick note too, uh, we are test optional. And so a student, you have options to submit or not submit your SAT or ACT scores. That is completely up to you. In regards to merit-based scholarships, so we offer merit scholarships and uh, financial aid to more than 80% of our enrolled students. Um, so there's no additional scholarship for that. And I will end there. Thanks so much, Parker, to you and the new school. Our next institution up is Southern Arkansas University. y'all it would work if i would unmute me can y'all hear me can everybody yes hear me? we can great awesome one second all righty sorry y'all don't worry there well, you go I looking great Yes, thank you. Um, like she said, my name is Mackenzie Hamilton. I'm Director of Recruitment here at Southern Arkansas University. Um, we are located here in Magnolia, Arkansas. Um, a little bit about us is we're a little bit over 4,500 students. Um, our student to teacher ratio is 16 to one. And we are a division two college and we're a part of the Great American Conference. And um, we were established in 1909 and we are the mule riders. Um, a fun fact, uh, this young lady right here on our mule, Molly, her name is Abby Guin. Um, she is our mascot. A lot of people think our mascot is the mule, um, which actually it is Abby. Abby is our mule rider. So she is our mascot. And so um, that's just a quick fact about us. Um, just to throw out there, we are offering in-person and virtual tours. And um, we are we offer in-person individual tours Monday through Friday, nine to four. Um, and I have left the link here where you can register for a tour um, as well as set up a virtual visit as well. Um, but we are offering both of those. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, how to apply to be a mule rider and um, the application is still open and um, it will be in and is fully online so you can apply at any time um, and so we it is still open for you guys to apply if you have yet to um, we are test optional and um, for fall 2021 entrance and so um, we will need your ACT or SAT scores for placement purposes but we are test optional for admissions um, after you have applied the next step would be scholarships um, here are institutional and academic scholarships based off of your ACT and your or SAT scores and your GPA. And so based off of that, um, you can also see that we are super scoring. We are super scoring for test scores for fall 2021. And so if any of these apply to you, please feel free um, to fill out that online application. Um, the deadline is March 1st, and that is next the next week. So please do so very quickly. And um, once you have applied and sent in and sending your test scores and your GPA with your transcript, um, you'll receive a award letter in the mail with a scholarship link. And so you'll be able to accept from there. Um, again, that priority deadline is quickly approaching. So if you um, 
see one that you're eligible for, please apply as, as soon as possible. And um, we do have out-of-state waivers for any student, any residents that are a part of the um, bordering states. And so if that applies for you, um, please check into that as well. And um, we've also have based based off of 15 hours, how much it will cost, how much our um, tuition is based off of 15 hours. So you can kind of get more of a um, sticker price there. Um, as I just stated, once you've been awarded a scholarship, how you can accept it um, if, you're, if you're eligible. So um, please do that as soon as possible if you've been awarded. Different aid. Um, from the state of Arkansas and other scholarships that I like to touch on is just different local scholarships based off for you guys. Um, any kind of local scholarships and especially your FAFSA, um, you can fill that out as well. Um, we do have other methods um, of scholarships. We do have um, performance-based scholarships. So if you're an athlete and you're, and you're interested in playing a sport here or being in the band or theater choir, any kind of performance-based scholarship, um, we do have those opportunities for you as well, as well as we do have private and endowed scholarships. And so um, through our SAU foundation. So those are available for you guys as well. Um, within SAU, we do have four academic academic colleges. We have the College of Business, the College of Education, and the College of Liberal and Performing Arts, and the College of Science and Engineering. Um, we have over um, 81 different degrees to choose from, and so um, these are more of our popular ones that I've listed, but this is not limited to. So if you don't see it on here, like I said, we have 80 plus degrees to choose from, so really the sky's the limit. Within our Great American Conference, with us being Division II, we do have men and women's sports. Um, th these are the NCAA sports, um, and so you can check those out as well. Um, as well as non-NCAA, but still competitive, we do have cheer, disc golf, esports, um, a fishing team, rodeo team, and trap shooting team, as well as we just added a trap shooting range last year. Um, we also have band, theater, and choir, so if any of that interests you and you would like to audition for that, that's available as well. Um, university housing. Um, I want to just kind of to go over this quickly. Um, I know we're on a time crunch, but once you've been accepted into the university, you can apply for university housing. Um, I just provided a few pictures here that you can see um, different styles of housing that we have, traditional style, hybrid style, suite style, um, and then how you can apply for the um, for housing application. And so you'll just go to RMISAU and then you'll click the housing application and begin your application process. There is a $100 reservation fee that is non-refundable that is due with the application um, at the end. So um, that is just how you can complete it. Um, different campus activities. Um, we have student activities board um, that hosts a lot of different on-campus activities. Um, due to our COVID regulations, we still have been able to have some monitored and adjusted um, on-campus events. Um, but these are several ones that we host. Um, we try to have one um, big one a month, but some smaller ones throughout the week. And so those are a few listed here. Um, we did update and we have added a Starbucks um, to our campus. A Starbucks is fully served on our campus. And we're so excited for that. Um, you can see a virtual tour of campus. And so you can see that our new education building and the band hall expansion. Um, I know my time is probably coming to an end. So um, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Reach out to me if you have any questions and I'll leave my information in the chat. Thank you. Mackenzie, thanks so much to you and Southern Arkansas University. Our final presentation tonight will be from the University of Missouri. Greetings, everyone. My name is Aaron Cook. I'm with the University of Missouri or Mizzou Admissions. We are in Columbia, Missouri, and I will get to that in just a second. This fall, we welcome back more than 30,000 students to our campus. They come from every county in the state of Missouri. Um, including all 50 states and more than 120 countries as well. Uh, so very geographically diverse campus. We are one of 17 institutions around the country that actually um, belongs on the list of Association of American Universities and also services our state as a land grant. What this means, uh, a lot of options for you when it comes to degree programs, first of all. You'll see programs from journalism and business to agriculture and engineering, vet med, medicine, law, all on one campus. And so it gives you a lot of opportunities 
us being a land grant and an AAU research institution. Where our students come from, obviously the Midwest is a stronghold, 65% come from the state of Missouri, the rest come from all over the country, like I mentioned earlier. I think a lot of students are surprised to see New York and California um, on this map, but we definitely uh, have them in the top 10 of our feeder states as well. Um, so you are definitely gonna be in a geographically diverse uh, classroom when you are with other students on our campus. I'm gonna assume you're not too familiar with the geography of Missouri or where Columbia is. Um, Missouri is um, uh, dissected north and south by Interstate 70 that connects St. Louis and Kansas City, the two metropolitan areas on both sides of the state. Columbia is right in the middle. So it's two hours away from Kansas City and um, St. Louis. And it is a, a quintessential college town. 120,000 people, very eclectic, very forward thinking, very progressive. Um, I love that our students love being a, a citizen of Columbia, not just a student of Mizzou when they are on our campus. When students are applying, they're applying to more than 300 degree programs directly as incoming freshmen. Um, just Thursday, we did announce that we are test optional going forward as well. So if you are going to be applying in a uh, future year, uh, you can apply with a test score or instead of a test score with a um, resume and a personal statement instead of that test score. So that's big news uh, for us as of this last week. More than 600 clubs and organizations on campus. A big part of that is Greek life. We have more than 50 fraternities and sororities uh, represented on our campus. Um, 80 intramural sports, 40 club sports, very athletic driven campus as well. We do have 20 division one sports in the SEC. Um, and so our, our fans definitely feel that raw, raw school spirit when they are on our campus. We pride ourselves on what we call the Missouri method. It's hands-on learning. Some examples here, you see engineering students, you see digital storytelling, which is animation game to design. But the biggest one is broadcast journalism. We are actually the only um, university in the entire country that has an, a network affiliate on our campus. So our students are actually doing six and a half hours of live television every day, 365 a year and walking in with a digital file working in a network affiliate. So you're gonna have this opportunity in um, uh, physical therapy, in nursing and agriculture edu education, every major you're in. So we definitely want you to have that experience freshman through senior year when you're on our campus. When we're talking about financing education, obviously that's a huge piece of the college church process. Um, we have one deadline for all scholarships, and that is uh, December 1st. So those are all competitive and general scholarships. So it makes it a bit easier to remember that uh, December 1st is your critical deadline for everything you're applying for. We do award automatic scholarships to those students that are submitting test scores and also test optional students. Um, and those are awarded any time from the time of admission all the way through June or July after your senior year when we get new documentations like transcripts or new test scores, whatever. Also, the state of Missouri has a very straightforward process for every out-of-state student to become a temporary Missouri resident during their freshman year. This allows them to automatically pay in-state instead of out-of-state for sophomore, junior, senior year, any grad school they stay as well. We are also offering in-person visits. They look very different. Um, we typically have a ballroom of 400 people. Right now it has 60 people in it with the sign seating, uh, so social distance for sure. You'll go on a campus tour with a group of no more than six uh, people, including one current student taking on that on that tour. But you can see we have some really great virtual options as well. Um, you can go to visit.missouri.edu to sign up for all of those. Finally, here's my contact info. That is my cell phone number. Feel free to call or text anytime after today if you do want to know more information about uh, Mizzou, 816-916-3524. There's my email address, and you're more than welcome to follow me on uh, my professional Twitter account if you like. Those are all my talking points. Thanks for your time today. Erin, thanks to you and the University of Missouri. So I'd now like to invite all of our panelists to turn on their cameras, and I'd like to ask them some questions for the audience's benefit. You guys are the experts, and um, if you want to go round robin in the order that you presented originally, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? Most of the students listening and families listening are probably um, students and families of junior students, but we might have some seniors or we might have some um, sophomores and freshmen as well. So uh, if uh, we'd like to start with the University of North Texas. Hey everyone. Um, I would say the best advice I have for you is to apply as early as you can. Um, usually when you apply early, you will get chances for better financial aid and for better scholarship opportunities, which can be a huge factor in determining which school you want to go to. 
Also, for example, at UNT, if you apply early, you get a merit-based scholarship of $1,000 or higher, you will be able to qualify for in-state rates, even if you're an out-of-state student, and that can drop your cost significantly. So definitely try to get that application submitted as soon as you can. And the other thing I would say, just try to connect with the campus that you're interested in, try to visit, contact us, and we'll be definitely happy to um, let you know as much as you want about our university. I would definitely agree with those points for sure. Um, I think my other piece of advice would as would be as you're starting to go on maybe some of those college visits, even though this year has looked a little different, you may not be able to get the campus, um, but however you can interact with the campus, maybe have a set of like two or three questions that you're asking all of the different universities that you're visiting. So you can kind of get a base of you know, what kind of majors do they have? How many students are on campus? Um, what are the activities that students like to do? So you kind of have a base level as you're kind of organizing all of these different schools that you're looking at that can kind of help keep you organized as you're going through your search process. Very good points. And I would um, add to that, search for scholarships. Um, some of the universities, MSU Texas, stack scholarships. Um, a lot of universities probably do that. Um, but also ask questions and um, find your admissions counselor. Ask them questions, even if you don't think it's an important question. If it's important to you, it's important to get an answer. Uh, I always like to um, encourage students to, um, I mean, I think it touches on a lot of the things you've mentioned, but ask the right questions. And I think some questions that maybe sometimes get overlooked are things like, what do I want my life to be like in college? Um, and part of that is like, do you have NCAA sports if that's what I'm looking for? Or, or do you have the majors I'm looking for? But some of it is also like campus culture stuff. What is the vibe on the campus? Um, are people gonna think, um, maybe not like exactly the way you do, because obviously that's not what we're looking for, but like, is it gonna have um, values that uh, kind of resonate with you and what you're um, excited about and things like that. Um, and then also ask for what you're looking for from your admission uh, staff, because we might not always be able to give you what you want, uh, but you definitely aren't going to get the help you need or the accommodation you need or the flexibility if you don't ask. So always try. And then the worst case scenario is that you're just at the same place you started. I agree with everybody what they said and um, I'm a big I'm over the campus visits too and I believe in visiting everywhere whether it's virtually or in person if you're able to um, I know that some things can look appealing online but you don't really learn the feel of it until you're actually there and so where you thought was your you know your fit once you go see the campus it might not be the right fit for you. And so I do encourage, I know, like everybody has said, unfortunately, things have been differently, but definitely take advantage of the virtual option um, and just see what's out there. And also with scholarships, um, look far and wide, especially I encourage everybody for any kind of local scholarships, any and every scholarship, like there's a Taco Bell scholarship. I mean, I know there's random scholarships out there, but I do encourage every student, I always, I always say, the money's out there you just got to find it and so um that's if i could have one piece of advice because there's a lot of scholarships that i miss personally just because i wasn't looking and it was right there in front of me so um enjoy it um find the right fit for you but that's just kind of my advice yeah i would add um have fun with this process it's going to be unique to you um and it's not an us versus you thing. We want to see you succeed. We want to be your cheerleaders. And whatever that right fit is, we're all going to cheer you on throughout the entire process. Um, so keep in mind that this is not always personal. And we really want you to find that best fit, whatever that looks like. So just have a really fun time in this and make sure that your college list is very unique to you. I told you guys these were the experts. Look at that. They had such great advice for you. I would, um, Aaron just put something in the chat and I think it's worth um, repeating. Um, because of the lack of testing availability, um, colleges aren't able to get names of students in the ways that they used to. And so um, 
make sure that you are on mailing lists of any college or institution that you're really excited about. And so sometimes that might mean going to their website and actually clicking on request information or send me information. It's, it's, it's not that they're not interested in you. It's, we just weren't a colleges, universities weren't able to buy the names that they normally did because of testing. So um, really quickly, if and maybe we'll do a 20 second round this time. Um, what fun campus tradition or fun fact would you like to share with the audience and we'll go in the same order. Okay, so our UNT Willis Library has a miniature books collection of, a, of about 2000 books or more, and the smallest one is one millimeter by one millimeter. So that's a very cool thing that we have at UNT. That's awesome. I love many things, so I want to see that. Um, at Butler, I think one of my favorite traditions is definitely um, our men's basketball games in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Um, I mentioned our live mascot earlier. He always goes to every game. Um, it's just a really fun atmosphere with all the students and really embracing um, kind of that sporting event and that fun tradition that we have at Hinkle Fieldhouse. At the new school, I think one of our coolest traditions. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I skip over you, Christy? Go ahead. I got too overzealous. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> the new school, I think one of our coolest traditions is our block party. Uh, we, we're we in the city. Um, and so we shut down um, a full city block and have like um, games and free food and like a climbing wall and um, just all sorts of cool things. And it kind of kicks off the start of the year and it faculty or their staff or their new students, existing students, it's a nice uh, way to kick off your school year and get to know um, your community. One of our traditions is uh, the freshman class gather around this fountain that's um, pictured behind me. And there's four horse, uh, four Mustangs there and they represent freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. So your freshman, you're testing the waters. There's a horse entering the pond. And then as, as you progress on through your academic career, the um, horse that's leaping out as a senior and you're ready to uh, you know, face the world and uh, start your new careers. <laughs> Um, at SAU, we have um, what's called a family day. Um, our first home football game, we invite every student's uh, parents, grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, everybody back. Um, and it's just a fun field day. But the one, the biggest tradition probably is our bed race. Um, you probably saw the picture um, very quickly. I know we had a short time, but um, we actually do race beds. All of our different organizations um, race beds down a street. Um, it's a single elimination. They decorate them all different themes um, from movie themed beds to TV shows, all that kind of stuff. And so they race them. Um, they have a rider and then four people running. And then at the end, you get bragging rights for the year being the bed race winner. And uh, probably between that and just homecoming week, we do have a large tradition during homecoming week, but definitely the bed race for sure is always ones that people just line up and watch all day long. So that was a segue into mine. There is some debate out there. Other schools do claim it, but we, um, according to Trivial Pursuit and Jeopardy, invented homecoming in 1911. Um, so our homecoming is actually a month long on our campus. And obviously there's a football game and royalty and a parade. Um, but we also run the country's largest blood drive for American Red Cross. Our, our fraternities and build, uh, sororities will build houses eight of them for Habitat for Humanity. So it's a really big deal on our campus as well. So again, according to Trail Pursuit and Jeopardy, we are the inventors. If you talk to Baylor and some other schools, there are some other um, uh, inventors out there. Well, those of you watching, I hope that you are paying attention to these wonderful experts and know that um, that they are here to support you and as they very clearly communicated early on. Um, so make sure you rely on them for all the great information that you need. Um, with that, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. So we hope that you'll provide us with some feedback on the program tonight. Sign up for more sessions. Um, there will be sessions for April available very soon on that same website where you registered. And the recording of this session and any of the other sessions will be available within about a week on that same website that you um, that you registered for the session. So with that, have fun with this college search and good luck and have a great rest of your weekend.